Thank y'all for being on. This is Steven. We'll get started here in just a minute. All right. Good morning, everybody. I think everybody knows the drill with Zoom and everybody's doing a good job about keeping themselves muted and all that. So um, thank you all for being with us today. We appreciate your time and your attention to this matter. Um, we've got several members of the House of Delegates and West Virginia Senate who are on with us. We're going to make some comments. Uh, and then, of course, we're happy to take questions as usual at the end. Um, just got some more folks coming in here. So as I was saying, we'll just make a few introductory comments and then uh, take questions from folks who are with us, uh, members of the media. And again, thank you all for your time. So uh, I think folks know the backstory here. Last week, um, we proposed a pause in the state gas tax uh, in response to the uh, extremely high prices at the pump right now. Um, since then, Governor Justice and um, Republicans in the state House and the state Senate have responded essentially saying, you know, we'd like to do that, but we can't do that. Um, well, we want to say, yes, we can do that. Um, just look, look at what Maryland's done. Uh, Maryland has done it. And when Maryland did it, prices went down immediately at the pumps. Um, I believe this time uh, today versus a week ago in Maryland, prices are down about 40 cents a gallon. Um, Georgia has done it. Uh, Florida and Virginia are planning on doing it as well. We are at a point right now uh, with our state finances in West Virginia that we have surplus funds immediately available to pay the road fund in full to cover the costs of this. You know, there's been some talk about that uh, in terms of bond obligations and um, it is an unsteady revenue stream in terms of you don't know exactly what it's going to be month to month. If you look at the state road fund, 
um, we are talking about actually giving a, a steady set amount to the road fund in advance if needed to make sure that this does not hurt um, the road bond effort at all. Um, you know, I, look, if we could do a new core deal worth over $300 million in a couple of days time, we can do a $35 million um, sales tax or excuse me, gas tax pause. Um, in the same time period, or I think even quicker to provide West Virginians immediate relief at the pump. Um, we are working on a bill to do this so that if everyone wants to cut taxes um, like they say they do, and everyone wants to help people who are struggling right now, like they say they do, um, then it's time to act. That's what we're here today to say, let's get it done. Um, leaders don't find excuses not to act. Leaders find ways to make it happen. And uh, if we're all on board about doing this, and I have not heard a single elected official say that they are opposed to this idea. Um, I've heard them say they would like to be able to do it. Well, then let's find ways to do it. Um, over the past week, I've heard from folks since we've um, put this idea out who've said, you know, I, I am struggling. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to make all my shifts as a result of these prices. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to take my kids to their activities or their um, uh, sports events because it's such a long period, uh, such a long distance to drive here in West Virginia with prices up. Folks are changing their lives in order to be able to afford gas and groceries and bills. And so, you know, this is real life. For folks who are not rich, the prices at the pump affect real life. And that's why we're standing up to say, there's something we can do about it, then we need to do it. Um, I wanna turn it over to some of my colleagues who are, who are with us here today. We're gonna to hear from House Minority Leader, Doug Scaff, uh, Senator Rich Lindsey, and then Delegate Kayla Young. Um, if she's able to join us, she was having some uh, travel uh, difficulties today. And then uh, Delegate Sean Fluharty. And then of course, questions. Um, so up next, uh, Minority Leader Scaff. Thank you there, uh, Minority Leader Baldwin. I I just echo your, your, your statements. I've talked to numerous people since this came out last Thursday. I think it would be a real help to people. I think the time is now to do something. Uh, many states, I was just traveling as well. I was up in Michigan and Ohio this past weekend, and all the headlines in their newspapers are what they're doing to put party politics aside and come together to make some lasting change at the gas pump. So no one's sitting here pointing fingers that, that it's one side or the other. Uh, I don't care who gets credit for it. I think the bottom line is we need to do something to help the people of West Virginia, and the time is now. Um, I know uh, Delegate Fluharty will touch base on we have so many bordering counties, so many bordering counties to surrounding states who are either already doing this or contemplating doing this. Uh, a Republican delegate uh, in the Eastern Panhandle, uh, Gary Howe, has been outspoken about people driving across the border into Maryland right now. And you got to think about the lost revenues that we're having. I just talked to members of the State Chamber of Commerce about uh, the possibility of, of the monies that would flow to other states, not just the gas tax, but they're going to buy their other groceries and other things while they're over there filling up their gas tanks. So we're going to lose sales tax altogether. So um, we're unique that we have so many surrounding states around us. We have one of the uh, 18th highest gas taxes. Uh, this will put an immediate impact back on people. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm calling on us to, to come back in the special session, like Minority Leader Baldwin said, and let's, let's brainstorm, work together. And, and get something done as soon as possible. And without, you know, I've, I've heard some criticism about uh, road suffering and maintenance suffering. We have all these states who are implementing something right now are seeing record surpluses as well. And they're using their budget surpluses to backfill. So no state is going with their funds unfunded. And we have the, the we have, we are blessed to be able to do the same right now. Uh, we have a surplus of funds. And that would require us to help reallocate that. And, and that's fine. I think all of us would be happy to come in, get this done in a day and, and allocate the money so there are no, no holes in our budget when it comes to road maintenance. At that time, I'd like to turn over to, uh, uh, let's see, I think Senator Lindsay, are you on there? There we go. Are you there? Yes, sir, okay. we got you. All right, all right, thank you. Um, you know, just, just something to kind of like a, a reality check in real time here. Right now, the average cost of gas for a gallon in, in West Virginia is 409 a gallon. 
Um, we are sitting on $600 million in surplus. And the expectation is that we will have a billion dollars in surplus by the end of the fiscal year. The other thing I want to add is this, as explained by Senators Baldwin and Delegate Scaff, this will not affect what we're doing with roads. We can take $35 million out of the surplus and fill the gap. I want to make sure that's clear because I keep hearing that from different folks who either don't understand it or, want, or, or don't want to accept it. We want to protect our roads. We want to keep repairing our roads. We believe the people of West Virginia deserve relief at the pump. And that's all we're talking about, a 30-day tax holiday. And, you know, again, as already, I'll echo what I want to because every man's it, especially the folks on this call end up asking, you know, Republican leadership. Um, we can do this. Uh, there's nothing that stops us from doing this. Uh, we don't risk anything in doing this. And it'll make a big difference in the lives of West Virginians up and down the line. I know Senator Baldwin, I was late to the call, but I'll, if he, I'm sure he said this, but I'll say it again. Last week, Maryland did the same thing. And last week, before they did so, it was 427 a gallon. Now it's 381 a gallon. So we're talking about a big impact on working folks trying to get around town, trying to get around the county going to their jobs, dropping their kids off at school, taking them to sports practice. The idea that this somehow won't have an impact, well, that's just crazy. That's ridiculous. It'll have a heck of an impact on people if they fill up their car once a week at $10 a week savings, $40 at the end of the holiday. And the hope and expectation is that these gas prices will go down in the future to some degree, not because of this, but the reality is we have 409 a gallon today something that I never thought I would ever see. A month ago, was at 3.32 a gallon. So I think it's time to act. I think we, we need to, uh, as Senator Baldwin, leader delegate mentioned, delegate uh, Scaff mentioned, we should call a special session. Let's get it done. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to get, in, get in the Capitol and, and agree to and vote for the new core investment, a large expenditure, um, and do it right for the people of West Virginia. This is along the same line to the extent that it, that it may not be as large, but it's something we can do. All of us on this call got into politics in the office because we want to help West Virginians. They need help now when you're looking at high fuel, fuel prices, high energy prices. I, was just, I go to the grocery store every two weeks. I spent $30 more than I usually do. So there's, there's inflation all around us, and this is just a simple step we can take to bring relief to the people of West Virginia who work hard and play by the rules. And that's all I've got to say. I guess, it, it, Delegate Flutarty, are you on or is, it, is Delegate Young on? I'm here. I think Kayla had some travel issues and couldn't make it. Okay. And I, I won't add too much to that. I, was, I want to note, though, what's going on around us. You know, Georgia suspended theirs through May 31st. Neighboring states, just today, West Virginia are waking up and paying 30 cents more per gallon than our neighbors in Maryland. And we know why. It's because their governor took action. Their legislature took action. And they made it a bipartisan issue. You know, we sent a communication to the governor last week, and he quickly turned into a partisan issue when we were just trying to have a bipartisan effort here to help West Virginians get instant relief at the pump. It should be noted that Maryland also has transportation bonds. So this issue that now, it, with every passing day, uh, the governor and his administration comes up with another excuse. The bottom line is other states are doing it. They're doing it well. They're doing it, and they're giving an instant relief to their citizens. And uh, Governor Hogan, who is a Republican, we should note, and in Georgia, a Republican governor, all these Republican governors seem to be on board with Democrats and passing bipartisan legislation or taking action themselves to get this done. Yet here in West Virginia, uh, we, have, we have an effort for, from the Democrats to try to get it done in a stalemate from the governor. You know, he's quick to talk about uh, our state's finances and how well we're doing with every press conference that he has, but he's not quick to help the average West Virginians, which we're trying to do right now. And I thought Governor Hogan made a great point. States are obligated right now to use every tool at their disposal. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to use this tool at our disposal. It's one thing we can do. A lot of there's a whole bunch of reasons why gas prices are rising, but what can we do as a state? The state can take action by suspending the gas tax, 
which others are doing. And we know places like the Northern Panhandle, where I'm from, the Eastern Panhandle, especially with Maryland, having 30 cents lower per gallon, citizens are gonna cross over at every, every step of the way, every chance they can get to get save 30 cents per gallon. Now in the Northern Panhandle, if Ohio and Pennsylvania make a move, same thing will happen here. So we need to get out front of this. And it's something that uh, I think should not be such a partisan issue like the governor is trying to make it out to be. But if we can't go in, one day we can get this done. It's not hard, it's not rocket science, it's political science. And I wish the governor would understand that. Thanks. Um, uh, Delegate Staff and Senator Baldwin, can I weigh in a little bit on this? Can you hear me? Go, go ahead, Delegate. Go ahead, Delegate. We've got a couple of people uh, who said they've got some questions. Yeah, uh, I just want to say real quick, I was down there last week when we had the press conference. That was the day that Maryland made their change. I was driving home the next day and every single gas station on I-68 had dropped it to $3.73 a gallon from 409. Maryland's gas tax is 36 cents. So immediately by, by taking that holiday, the, the entire 36 cents went to the purchases of, uh, purchasers of gas in Maryland. Now, I know an argument uh, always in the past against a, 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 a permanent reduction of a gas tax is that sometimes the oil companies do some profit taking. I think there's something about this 30 day window that focuses the, the limelight on them and they didn't dare do any profit taking. So I strongly suggest that if we reduce ours, the customers will get every penny of the benefit. Thanks. Thank you, Delegate. I think that's a really good point. I mean, the market would correct itself. If you've got a gas station that's abiding by this, let's say we do the, the pause and you've got gas stations that are abiding by it and gas stations that are not abiding by it, who's going to shop at the gas station that's 30 cents a gallon more? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, the market's going to correct itself. Not to mention we have the Consumer Protection Division within the Attorney General's office who would have a field day, I imagine, with anybody um, who tried that. Um, all right. Well, we've probably said enough at this point, and you all have questions. I know that um, Stephen Adams has already raised his hand with a question. Uh, Stephen, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, everybody, uh, for doing this. Uh, you all have proposed, I think, a couple things, either for the governor to unilaterally do this or for a special session and the legislature come in and knock it out in a day or two. Uh, governor, in his statement last week, made much ado about saying he doesn't have the ability to do this. It has to be a legislature thing. I know in the press release that the state Democratic Party put out, uh, Delegate Pushman, uh, Pushkin, the vice chair, had said that uh, pointed to a couple examples of governors either freezing or suspending various taxes uh, in emergency situations. Uh, just in 2020, the governor had moved the uh, personal income tax deadline from April to July, and he did that unilaterally, and that didn't require any legislative action to do that. And I would argue that's a pretty major uh, tax deadline to the unilaterally move. So do you, obviously you're working on legislation, as you said, but do you kind of disagree with the governor in regards to his power to kind of unilaterally do this if he wanted to? Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Steve. I'll chime in and let others chime in as well. I mean, I think the point here is we want to get it done. We want to get it done and, and nobody, no elected official has said they're opposed to doing it. So we're saying uh, we're open to options. And it seems the path of least resistance is to do it through a special session. Um, so that's why we're beginning to work on legislation, you know, and, and move that ball forward that way. Um, there, you're right. There have been instances where governors in the past have taken similar actions. Um, I will grant you that the actions might not be exactly the same as we're talking about in this instance. So if there are any questions, then let's do what we need to do, take the path of least resistance. And I, I mean, I'm convinced a special session could knock this out in a couple hours max. Oh, were, there, were there any other folks that wanted to chime in to Steve's question? Yeah, if I could real quick, Stephen, um, you know, if go, we have go to for it here that we are still operating under emergency powers. The governor still has emergency powers and he has great discretion with those powers. And he has yielded quite the sword in the past two years using those powers. And he doesn't ask the legislature for permission to do so. It wasn't until Democrats proposed uh, 
suspending the gas tax, all of a sudden he feels like he doesn't have these powers that he's invoked for two years straight. Uh, so I would disagree with the governor's assessment. I also say that he has yet to justify that why he can't do it. He just said a blanket position. I can't do it. I need the legislature act. Well, there's two things to that. One, I believe you can under emergency powers. And two, he also has the power to bring us in the special session if he truly wants to get this done. So he has all the power right now, especially under the emergency powers, uh, to get this done. And I think he's just, you know, moving the football, moving the posts and trying to play political games when we're just trying to get something, something done for some quick relief to West Virginians. Thank you, Delegate. Um, it looks like the next question in the chat is from Michaela Newton with WDVM. Uh, how much is the gas tax in West Virginia? And how much will West Virginia save if it's paused? It's 35.7 cents. That's the state gas tax. And um, so in Maryland, where they've done this, as we mentioned before, those full savings were passed on to consumers immediately. Local media reports said when the bill was signed, uh, local savings were passed on to local residents immediately. Uh, let's see. I think David Beard is up next. Yeah, hi. Um, can you hear me? Uh, I was going to ask realistically. Yes, sir. Okay, realistically, how would you expect a, a special session to come about? Are you trying to talk with uh, Blair and Henshaw? Are you just hoping that events like this will exert some public pressure and uh, lead someone to cave? Uh, what do you think is going to happen, or how do you hope this will happen? Sure, Dave. And I, I, I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit, but I think I got the gist of your question, which was uh, how do you expect a special, se a special session to happen logistically? Um, well, here's, here's the bottom line. Um, I have not heard a single elected official, including the governor, including the speaker, including the Senate president, say that they didn't want to do this. In fact, they all said that they would like to be able to do it, but they were just, they had some concerns. Um, and, and, you know, frankly, I didn't hear many specifics about what those concerns were, which is why we're here today going through some of the um, proposed or uh, apparent objections to this. And, and I, I just don't see anything there in those apparent objections. So we're saying, if there's the will to do this, and everybody really wants to do it, well, let's do it. Um, and so that's why we're going to go ahead and work on legislation to have it ready to go um, if and when we get to that point. Um, I certainly think I've heard from a lot of West Virginians who want this to happen, and uh, I can't imagine that our political leaders would not be responsive to the needs of West Virginians, especially um, when they're struggling. And Anybody David, else want to weigh in? Yeah, David, if you're asking specifically what can we do, being in the minority caucus, you know, we're, we're hoping to, yes, uh, urge the governor to call us in and, and, the, and their Republican leadership to call us in and do the right thing and give relief to everybody. If not, we are prepared to put together a petition and work all our members and we could call ourselves back in. But we, we are thinking that the governor and the leadership would uh, common sense prevail here and put politics aside and just do the right thing and call us in and let's talk about it. But yeah, we could we could put together a position, a petition, and ask all our colleagues to sign on and call ourselves back in. And if we need to go that route, we will. But I think uh, common sense, we hope, would prevail here soon. Let's see, I think Mark Curtis was up next. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Still, um, yes. Uh, first of all, the governor last week accused the Democrats of grandstanding. I'd love somebody to address that. My bigger question, though, is uh, some of the states are calling on a three month moratorium. Uh, it just seems to, and some others are asking for 30 days. But if you have a special session and you pass this and it's successful and popular, are you going to have to come back in another 30 days and have another special session? Why not just do 90 days like some of the states are doing? And um, that, that's my question and address the grandstanding claim too. Sure, Mark, I'll kick it off and then uh, others are welcome to chime in. Um, in my experience, when people, you know, make that whole political stunt argument, they don't want to talk about the real issue. Um, and the real issue here is really clear. West Virginians are struggling. If you are not rich, this is impacting your real life every single day. Your ability to get to and from work, uh, your ability to get your kids to and from their sports, their activities, their extracurriculars, 
it affects everything you do if you're not rich, if you're living on a fixed income. And, and let's be frank. I mean, that, that's, that's most of us. That's most of us in West Virginia. So, you know, there is a real issue at play here. And we saw this happening on a bipartisan basis across the country. Friday. Delegate Flu Hardy, go ahead. And My apologies, folks. <laughs> yeah, back. go go for it. Now I was going to let Delegate Flu Hardy chime in there. Oh, I mean, if I could chime in real quick, uh, Mark, to your question, you know, I think it's rich coming from Governor Justice to accuse anybody of grandstanding. I mean, this is the guy who brings baby dog out every five minutes and even brought him on sacred ground to the House floor during the state of the state. And uh, the governor of who unveiled Cal Manor during a budget crisis. I mean, this guy is a walking grandstanding politician. If he knows grandstanding, he just needs to look in the mirror. We're concerned about West Virginians getting instant relief at the pump. And every other state has done this in a bipartisan manner with Republican governors leading the way. He could have chosen to do the same. He has not. He has chosen the political route because that's all he really knows. The actual legislative process is foreign to him. You know, the actual ability to lead within the realm of the governor is foreign to him. But being political and grandstanding and, and you know, waving his arms up and down and, and yelling very loudly, that's kind of his area. And that's what he defaulted to when given the question posed by Democrats, let's suspend the gas tax. His response was not, let's get it done in a bipartisan manner. His response to revert back to his political uh, inclinations, which is to grandstand for himself. Uh, if I could weigh in, uh, Mark, I, I wouldn't mind doing it for longer than, than 30 days. Uh, we have interim meetings scheduled in Charleston uh, toward the end of about a month from now, the end of April, probably, I think it's five weeks from now. Uh, and then again, in, in late May, we could, we could do it for 90 days or even, even say 60 days and then have the ability, let's say we did it for 60. We'd have the ability then in May, since we're coming to town anyway, uh, for the governor to call us in or we call ourselves in to extend it if we wish. So yeah, yeah I don't think there's anything wrong with thinking about uh, a longer term than 30. I would like to, I think we should do it for at least 30, but I don't mind doing it for a little longer than that because we've got the money. The money is there to handle it, to put into the road fund uh, from the surplus and, and from the governor's contingency fund. There's money there too. The only thing, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. The only thing that I would add to everything that you just heard in response to your question, Mark, is, you know, we are elected to represent the folks we represent and we're elected to, to give voice to their concerns. Um, raising those concerns to the governor, which is all that we've done, is not grandstanding. That's called helping our constituents. That's called being responsive to our constituents. That's called doing our job. And I think we need to remember and remind ourselves every once in a while that that's what we're elected to do, regardless of the politics, regardless of the accusations. Let's bring relief to West Virginians. And Mark, all I was going to say in reference to your 90 day uh, idea was we, we can even authorize the governor that give him the power to extend it in 30 day increments. You know, we could do anything. We could come in and pass a bill that says he has the power every third to extend it for 30 days at a time. Uh, we could do all of the above. Uh, we're sitting on almost a billion dollars in surplus. And the surplus was a, long, a lot to do with the uh, federal funding that has to do with infrastructure. And this is infrastructure related. Uh, secondly, uh, <laughs> the grandstanding question, I, I think it's when you're trying to reduce a tax that affects all people fairly and evenly, regardless if you make 20000 a year or 200000 a year, this is the, they, it's all of a sudden called a political stunt. But when we, when, when the governor and others introduce a proposal to reduce a sales tax that would only reduce taxes that people pay to a small percentage, that's, that's called governing. I mean, come on. I think the bottom line here is we're just trying, and I don't care, I've said this before, governor wants to take this issue and run with it. Do it, do it, take credit for it. We'll take a back seat. It's not about Democrats or Republicans, just do it. We just, we, yeah, we might've, we might've, uh, 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 poked at him a little bit to get the conversation started because we've been doing nothing. The answer is not do anything at all. Something needs to be done. 
and he'd gladly take the lead in this, go for it. That would be great. We'd love to work with him. He has our, our colleagues in the Democrat Party support to call us back in for a session and work together to put some sort of holiday to give real relief. Let's do it. Let's put the politics aside and just do something. We'll go to our next question. I'm sorry I cut out during my response, but it looks like everybody else covered it. The only thing I was going to say in addition is, you know, we started with 30 days because we thought it was a reasonable start. You know, we were trying to be reasonable. Um, and honest to goodness, I thought this was going to be completely bipartisan like it's been in every other state. And, uh, you know, we, we said as much but three or four times at least last Thursday. Um, but the response has not been that. And that, that's outside of our control. All right, I think uh, Charles Young was up next with a question. Uh, yes, sir. And Senator Bolden, I want to ask you uh, about what you said a couple of times about there hadn't been any elected officials who had said they were opposed to this. Did you all interpret, um, you know, Speaker Hanshaw and mm -hmm. President Blair's statement differently than I did? It seemed like they were stating in that statement that they were opposed to this and listed reasons why. I know you addri addressed some of the reasons, but it sounds like with their statement that they were opposed to it. Well, you know, I, I didn't hear that at all. I mean, I heard Governor Justice and Speaker Hanshaw and, and Senate President Blair all say, we'd like to be able to provide tax relief. You know, we're all about providing tax relief. But then they went on to say, but, but we're not sure about this. Well, um, this is what's immediate. This is what's before us right now. Um, folks are struggling, and this is a way that we can do it. Bipartisan, again, other states are doing it. So I have not heard anybody say I am ideologically opposed on a policy basis um, to this proposal. Um, I've heard some some talk around the edges, you know, some what sound to me, frankly, like excuses. Um, but, you know, you can't say I'm all for tax relief for West Virginians, but I'm not so sure about this right now. Well, you know, you can't have it both ways. So hopefully that gives you some context in terms of what I've heard them say. And I think they've been pretty explicit in their statements saying, we'd like to be able to do this. And we're saying we can. Yeah, just to, just to follow up on what Let's Senator see. Paul, um, Okay, just, just to, yeah, just to follow up on what Senator Baldwin said, you know, the, the governor had a 10 paragraph press release last week about this issue. And he began by saying, I agree, we need to suspend the gas tax. At least that's what I took from it. And then he gave every excuse in the world, mo most if not all of them, uh, nothing but mere uh, distractions to the discussion we need to have. And, you know, again, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, it amazes me. We sit on, it's been said before, yet, but I want to say it again, we have $600 million in surplus. We were expected to have $1 billion in surplus by the end of the fiscal year, and we can't do this? Come on. That's ridiculous. $35 million for a, for, a gap, for a month of gas tax holiday is a pittance, but it'll mean a world of difference to the people of West Virginia. All right, we will go to, I think, Kenny Bass had a question next. Thank you for taking a moment. Um, I wanted to ask about the permanency of taxes. Uh, if you guys take off this tax for one month, two months, three months, then you're talking about uh, temporary relief that will total anywhere from 35 to $105 million, which could take a tenth out of that projected surplus that you're talking about. Where's the talk about tax reform to cut taxes permanently? Because with something like this, while people may enjoy one or two fill-ups over a month's period and not have a tax increase, after 30 days, if it goes away, we're right back where we started from because there's obviously no timetable set on the circumstances which caused this problem in the first place. So are, is there any appetite for any permanent type of tax cuts to be talked about in the legislature? Or are we just going to talk about a 30 day or 60 day holiday and then we're right back where we started from? Can I take that? Can I respond? Anybody wants to jump in, jump well, right in. Yeah, I want to. But Rich, you're ready to go. So you go next and then I'll go. Well, Kenny, I, the only thing that I, I think you're right, I think 
uh, it's a good question to raise. You know, at the beginning of the beginning of the session, uh, Senator Baldwin, Delegate Scaff, the leaders of the Democrat caucus and parties in both houses came together and introduced legislation that would reduce the sales tax to 6% to 4.5% permanently. And then a reduction would occur every time we're over a billion dollars in the rainy day fund and keeping our A rating to that fund. You know how much discussion that got on the floor, or not on the floor, but how, how much time that, that particular bill took on a committee agenda? Zero, no time whatsoever. So we've been talking about all session, trying to bring permanent tax relief to West Virginians, permanent tax relief for all West Virginians. If you, incre if you decrease the sales tax like that, the, the average family would have anywhere between two to $300 by the end of every year and savings at least that that's just that and that's the conservative estimate so we have been talking about uh uh permanent tax relief it's just no one wants to listen to what we put forward and i can't explain why they wouldn't want to listen to it but it was in response to the fact that we do have this ability as a state right now with the type of surpluses we have and the fact that people are, are suffering from inflation. So anything you can do, whether it's the sales tax, suspend the gas tax for a month, you know, present to the people of West Virginia, let them weigh in on a, on a minimum wage. Uh, that idea we took from a very conservative Ohio legislature, putting it on the ballot and increasing it to 1025 an hour in West Virginia, and then letting it increase over time according to the Consumer Price Index. Again, that got zero time on the agenda in the state Senate and the state House. So we have been trying to address those issues and trying to bring permanent relief to West Virginians, um, you know, not just permanent, but in, in response to the inflation that everyone's suffering from today. So yeah, and uh, that was very well said. Um, the only thing I would add is that, you know, Kenny, this is immediate. This is what's before people right now. This is not, you know, I, I think in some people's minds, this is some hypothetical policy. This is real. You know, people right now are having to make decisions about how they spend their limited income when prices for groceries and gas and utilities are sky high. So we can provide immediate relief right now. We should. We also should provide relief over the long term, and Senator Lindsey went over some of those uh, proposals that we've made in the very recent past, which unfortunately did not gain any traction. I, Anybody I totally else want to chime in? I, I totally agree, and just real quick, I mean, if this wasn't such a serious issue, um, why, why is federal legislators considering doing something with the federal tax? I mean, this is hitting everyone right now. I agree, Kenny. Um, I, I could sit here all day and talk about all the different pieces of legislation we introduced that would reduce sales tax or help people give immediate need, but it seemed like the only one that will ever gain traction uh, was the one that came from the governor's idea. Even line item vetoed uh, a proposal that the House had that would reduce income tax, but he line item vetoed that out of the budget because it wasn't his proposal. So I think we need to have a serious look, put politics aside, everybody come together and look at which taxes are the most onerous on people and what we can do to put money back in their pockets. I agree. But, you know, when we spend zero minutes on the floor debating that and, and seven hours talking about uh, social issues that do nothing but move our state backwards, it sees where their priorities are. All right. Um, unfortunately, I lost connection and lost the chat again, but I, I seem to remember that Joe had a question from the Gazette. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, I just asked, is any um are any Republicans privately or publicly outside of um Speaker Hanshaw and Senate President Blair express support for this? Um to you guys or you know, in private. Delia Scaff, did you allude to that? Did you want to answer yeah, that? Yeah, question? I, I know I know I know I know delegate uh Gary Howell in the Eastern Panhandle, he's feeling it over there. He thinks we should come and look at all different options. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for him and say he's for doing away with this right now, but he thinks we, we could do a combination of things to give people immediate relief because he's, his fear is all those people on the, especially in the Eastern Panhandle are driving across state lines and it'll have an adverse effect on the rest of our, our, our tax intake because they're going to be buying a lot of other stuff other than just gasoline once they leave 
uh, go across our border. So I've talked to numerous, I won't reveal all their names, numerous Republican legislators who thinks we need to do something right now. And they all echo the sentiment, if we can do this for Nucor on the combat, hoping that all this comes to benefit West Virginia, why can't we do it on the now? On the now, we need to do something now to give people relief when it comes to uh, giving this tax back. So yes, uh, I will I will say it's been more than 10 people I've talked to on the elected officials of a different party persuasion who agree we need to do something about this. All right, it looks like there are no more uh, questions in the chat. Anybody else have questions? All right, well, thank you all very much for your time. We appreciate you joining us today. Several folks have asked about a recording. Um, we will send out a link to a recording of this today um, and we'll get that out as soon as possible because I think folks are obviously are working on deadlines. So thank you all for your time and uh, take good care. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you.